Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Alberto Asquer. I'm director of SAFIM, the Center for Financial and Management Studies. And I'm here in this webinar to provide you an illustration of the center and what we teach there. Then, uh, then people, welcome to, to all of you. Please feel free to drop uh, any question in the chat uh, if you like. Uh, I will uh, progress through the presentation and uh, hopefully illustrate uh, all the main features of our programs. And I will be happy to take questions either along the way or later at the end. So let me start uh, just by telling you uh, something about SOAS that you probably know something about. Uh, SOAS is a, a university based in London, part of the uh, University of London. It is well known in the world uh, as a center for uh, expertise, especially in uh, Africa, Asia and the Middle East, uh, where there is a, a high concentration of experts in uh, these areas in various uh, fields of uh, social science and uh, humanities and, and arts. Uh, we conduct uh, uh, teaching on campus uh, with the various uh, uh, undergraduate postgraduate and PhD programs, and uh, we also deliver our courses uh, in a distance learning format, including uh, those uh, which are offered by SAFIMS. Uh, SOAS uh, is, uh, I would say, well, fairly well balanced uh, in between on-campus and distance learning uh, students. So as you can see here from, uh, from the slide, uh, we have uh, almost uh, 4,000 uh, distance learning students uh, and online students uh, as a whole, roughly half of which uh, are based uh, in, uh, in SAFIMS. And we have more than 5,000 people who populate the on-campus uh, student population. Uh, we are very diverse in terms of uh, students' uh, participation. As you can see, uh, many come from uh, Europe and uh, from uh, sub-Saharan As well, we have quite a number of students from the Americas, Asia, and the Middle East and uh, North Africa. This um, um, fragmentation, this dispersion of students is a feature both of on-campus uh, programs and also of distance learning uh, programs. At Safins, we have uh, students uh, who, are, who live or are from uh, more than 150 countries uh, in, uh, in the world. Uh, the age of our distance learning uh, students uh, is uh, especially in the range uh, between 25 and uh, 44. Uh, SAFM uh, only offers postgraduate uh, uh, programs. Uh, most of our students, I would say, are like mid-career uh, professionals or civil servants uh, or uh, employees, in, uh, especially in financial uh, institutions. But as you can see, we are uh, quite uh, widespread and we, are, we are also have uh, relatively young and relatively, relatively old uh, students uh, with us. This, uh, this slide uh, provides uh, an overview of the offering uh, that we provide. So uh, on the left, uh, you see the list of the MSc programs uh, that we provide. We have a number of programs uh, in the area of finance, uh, including streams uh, on uh, banking, economic policy, financial sector management, quantitative finance. Then we have an MSc in finance and financial law, which combines uh, uh, finance uh, and the law's uh, perspectives, an MSc in international business administration, and the two MSCs which focus more on the public sector, public policy management, and public financial management, uh, which are incidentally those which I specifically convene. As you can see from the right, uh, you can, uh, we also uh, launched a couple of MOOCs so far uh, on the uh, platform of Future Learn. One is titled Risk Management in the Global Economy. The other one is uh, titled Understanding Public Financial Management, How is Your Money Spent? As any other MOOC, uh, these are provided uh, for free. Uh, students can enroll. They're relatively short, just uh, four weeks. And uh, this is a way to provide anyone the opportunity to get a sense of what we teach at SOAS and possibly make the decision to study one of our MCC programs. So let me get into more details uh, about these, uh, these programs. Uh, first, let me say something more general about how they are, they are structured. So the minimum time which is expected for completion of an MSc is uh, two years. So they're like a part-time mode of study. And uh, the MSc is expected to be completed in a maximum of uh, five, uh, five years. 
For taking the MSc program, students are expected to take eight modules among a list of different modules students can, can choose from. And these modules are studied over study sessions. We are running five study sessions per year at present. During these study sessions, students can select among a range of modules which are offered in a particular time. During the study session, st students uh, study for eight weeks. And during this period, they are also required to submit uh, two assignments, uh, which are used for providing feedback and uh, for part of the assessment. The final assessment uh, is also uh, based on an examination, which is uh, roughly in October, and uh, which is uh, an examination which is done in presence. It's, uh, three hour long examination, which is based in any of the about 300 examination centers of uh, University of London international programs. You can find the list of, their cent of, their, of the centers uh, in their website, but basically you can find uh, one in almost in every country and definitely in any major city in, uh, in countries. Uh, this is the general structure, which is followed by any MSc program. Then if we enter a bit more of details, uh, as you can see here, every MSc program has a specific list of uh, modules, uh, could be core modules and the number of elective modules that students uh, are invited to, to select. So for instance, if you take the MSc in finance uh, with a stream on banking, uh, there are core modules like uh, banking and capital markets, corporate finance, corporate and investment banking, portfolio and fund management, retail banking and household finance. And on the top of these, students are also expected to select a number of electives to make a total of eight modules as a whole. You can find more details about the electives for each MSc on our website, uh, safims.ac.uk. Every MSc program is slightly different in the selection of core modules and electives. So here on the right of the slide, you can see which are the core modules for the MSc Finance Economic Policy. Uh, to some extent, these modules may overlap, like banking and capital markets, but to some extent, each MSc has very specific modules, like for instance, the International Monetary Fund and Economic Policy for the MSc Finance and Economic, and Economic Policy to reflect the specific disciplinary and uh, orientation of every MSc program. The other streams of the MSc Finance include the financial sector management and the quantitative finance. So in the first one, you see modules like bank financial management, banking and capital markets, banking strategy, corporate finance, finance in the global market. In the other one, modules like derivatives, economic principles and data analysis, econometric analysis and applications, financial econometrics, modeling firms and markets, and the risk management principles and, and applications. The MSc Finance and Financial Law deserves a few more words because the particular nature of this MSc program is to combine expertise from the areas of finance and the area, the area of laws. It can be especially designed, if you like, for uh, people who come from a background of uh, either in finance or in laws, but who wish to extend their expertise either from the finance to the legal area or from the legal area to the finance area in order to have a better appreciation of the theory behind the design of certain contracts which are used in uh, financial, financial management practice. Core modules here are Introduction to Law and to Finance, which is typically advised to be the first module that students should take. Then Corporate Finance, Financial Law, Legal Aspects of International Finance, and Risk Management the Principles and, and Application. Uh, here, the MSc includes as well five core modules and then three elective, uh, elective modules. The MSc International Business Administration is rather focused uh, management of the private uh, corporate uh, business sector. So you see there are core modules, uh, international business strategy, and managing the transnational corporation. And then there is uh, a list of elective modules, uh, which typically also include uh, some regional uh, focus. So you may find uh, some uh, modules uh, which are especially focused on the economy and managing business uh, in areas like uh, China or areas like uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. 
So this uh, MSc program uh, is more focused on uh, business, uh, business sector combined with the sources of expertise on a particular countries or particular particular regions and that this is especially helpful for anyone who is interested to pursue a career especially in these areas of the of the world the MSc in public financial management is instead focused on the financial management of the public sector so there are a list of core modules macroeconomic policy and financial markets Public financial management planning and performance, which is the budgeting function of the government, basically. Public financial management revenue, which includes taxation and other revenue sources. And then uh, financial reporting. Uh, and the students may choose if to take uh, either the module based on uh, IFRS or the module based on a data set of uh, accounting standards, uh, IPSAS. And uh, last, the MSc program in uh, public policy, public policy and management uh, is generally oriented to various aspects of uh, uh, making and implementing public policies and executing uh, public policies, which is the government uh, machinery. A particular feature of this MSc is that it does not really have any core module. There is just a long list of uh, elective modules uh, and the students uh, are free to choose uh, any eight among them as, as they like. So this uh, uh, provides the students the possibility to tailor the contents of this MSc depending on their interests, which could be more on the public policy side, for instance, or more to the public administration, public management, uh, public management side. So these are general features about the uh, contents uh, in terms of modules of each of these uh, MSc programs. And uh, please uh, consult uh, our website uh, for more details, especially about the electives, the mode of assessment, the contents of these, uh, of these programs. Feel free to contact the program convener, which could be either myself or any of my colleagues at CEFIM by email. You can find the addresses uh, on the website uh, and we will be happy to come back to you with answers to your, to your questions. So generally, you may have got the sense of uh, uh, how we provide this, uh, uh, this learning experience. Uh, after enrollment, after registration, students enroll to, to modules which can uh, select. Uh, students may select a number of modules in advance to take in their MSc programs, or they can just uh, select uh, along the go. And so they take uh, and uh, choose one after, after the other. And, uh, uh, along, along the same lines, uh, students may pay in advance uh, for a number of modules, uh, or they can just pay one module after the other when the, they, they register for, for taking each of them. Uh, at present, uh, uh, students receive a physical study pack for uh, studying for the modules, which include uh, lecture notes that we call units, uh, and all the readings, textbooks, uh, and uh, other copies of uh, um, um, and journals, uh, articles, or other materials, and the students uh, are invited to follow a precise schedule of After the, first, after the first four weeks of study, students have submitted the first assignment and they receive marks and the feedback on it. And then at the very end, after the, the, the last eighth week of the module, they are required to submit the second, uh, the second assignment and then to, uh, um, to keep all the, what they learn aside until they come and sit the examination in, uh, in October. Uh, during this uh, period of the eight weeks, students uh, are assigned a tutor. We have uh, roughly 80 tutors uh, working with, uh, with us at uh, Sethens. These are uh, uh, colleagues in other universities. Uh, these are former uh, SOAS PhD uh, graduates. Uh, these uh, may be uh, policy experts in different, uh, different fields. Uh, we roughly provide uh, uh, 10 students uh, per each tutor, so the ratio is uh, quite good in terms that the students may provide answers to any questions you may pose to them either directly by email or through a, a message system or through a forum uh, of uh, an online platform that students can have access to during the, the course of their, of their studies. 
And uh, of course, the assignments are an important component part of the learning experience because they can provide the, the way for tutors to signal students if they are on the right track in their understanding and development of their, of their skills. Uh, students have uh, access to uh, library materials of the University of London and of SOAS University of London in particular. And so you can also have the opportunity to explore and uh, to enrich your, uh, your learning by looking at various, uh, various resources. I'm happy to take some questions along the way, and I see one from uh, Karina at present. So to study the MSc in public policy and management, do I need any science math background? Um, for the specific MSc public policy and management, there is no particular requirement of any science or math background. There, is, there can be a little bit of arithmetic in some of the modules, for instance, that one on a project appraisal, where students learn how to apply some techniques of evaluation of an investment like a net present value or cost benefit analysis but the mathematics which is used is relatively simple like a high school high school level this is not the case for other msc programs especially those msc in finance which typically require more advanced level of mathematics like derivatives or integration and so please check the specific requirements or any specific um, description of any MSc to get a sense of the level of math which is required. Uh, th there is also another question from uh, Ipesh Kataria, and uh, the answer is yes. So students want to get access to SOAS library and also of the University of London International Programs uh, library during the course. So apart from the readings that you receive in the study pack, there is always the possibility to explore more of uh, the, the library resources that we have uh, in these two libraries. The SOAS one is especially rich, I would say, uh, precisely in the regions uh, which are at the core of the expertise of SOAS, so Africa, Middle East, and, and Asia. Access to, to these resources is especially helpful, let me add, uh, students choose to take a dissertation as a part of their modules. So generally, dissertation is not compulsory in these MSc programs. So students can complete the MSc by just taking eight taught modules. But if students want, they can substitute one of the taught modules with a dissertation. Dissertation is uh, an original piece of research that the students conduct. It takes roughly eight months. It runs from January and the submission is uh, in uh, September. A uh, dissertation module is done by having a supervisor assigned on a particular topic. The topic is proposed by the student because this reflects the particular interest of the, of the student. And the supervisor provides help to structure a good, a strong, a robust research design and to assist the student in the data collection. We pick other questions along the way. Another one is, uh, when uh, is the examination timetable released and when can I find it? So uh, examination timetable is released uh, roughly in springtime for the examination period being in October. And the information is provided in the University of London International Program uh, website. And uh, uh, from, from SAFIM, you may find a link to the appropriate page. And this uh, would enable, typically, students to, to plan when, when, in, when in advance to be free for the day when there are the examinations for the modules. Let me take also another question, which is about how often uh, there are exams and where do they take place. Um, the exam, exams are uh, in October. There is just one exam once, once per year at, at present, but uh, this is, a, I would say, common practice of the UK uh, universities. Uh, so it is roughly in October. The precise date is uh, communicated roughly at, by the end of uh, springtime. 
um, in the website of University of London International Programs, which also includes the list of the roughly 300 examination centers which are scattered all around the world. Examination centers may be a local university, it may be the local branch of the British Council, for instance. These are institutions with which the University of London has agreements to set up the examination room and uh, to collect the exam scripts at the very end and uh, to ship them to, to SOAS uh, to, be, to be marked. So students are free to sit at the exam in any place uh, they, they, they like in, uh, in the world. So I confirm that uh, uh, as an answer to another question that yes, uh, dissertation is uh, optional. So rather than uh, at a certain point in the course of study uh, enrolling for another module, dot module, students just enroll for taking a, a dissertation if, uh, if they like. Management University of Science Switzerland, but with a major in finance or how many ECTS have to be earned in finance topics. Uh, I would say there is not any strict uh, um, requirement uh, in this respect because uh, it is the program convener to appraise out of the application if uh, the student is uh, considered to be able to undertake uh, the, the particular MSc program in a, uh, in a successful way. Uh, this uh, amount of flexibility is there because it also allows to consider applications from uh, individuals uh, who, for instance, may not really have an undergraduate degree uh, close uh, to the field of study of the MSc in finance, for instance, but, for example, they may have uh, a long work experience in the finance industry. And so uh, the, the, uh, the course convener who is appraising the application may also uh, assess that because of the work experience, which is described in the personal statement, uh, the applicant may nevertheless uh, have gained uh, quite a good understanding of the field of study, uh, despite of any kind of uh, undergraduate degree they may have earned a couple of decades before. So um, I, would, I would suggest that if you like to consult in advance the specific uh, program convener, you find that they are email on the web pages of, uh, of, uh, of SAFIM, just if you like to be safe that the application could be positively assessed before just, uh, just submitting it. Let me take another question. So equilibrium between uh, uh, reality and theory is considered the financial Studio, and that there is a, sometimes a lack of reality in the studies about. Uh, well, you know, uh, if you take some uh, subjects, especially economics, they are, uh, I would say, especially heavy in the theoretical side. I would say this can be the same of uh, quite a number of uh, finance uh, and financial management uh, topics. Uh, I would say generally our MSc programs, uh, they tend to place uh, quite a considerable amount of attention to uh, Students uh, are uh, mid professionals or civil servants or employees in financial institu institutions, and so they may take the MSc program for a leap in their career, for example. So the, these MSc programs in the units may either include some case studies, for instance, uh, which may look at uh, uh, some particular institutions or experiences in countries in the world, or they may include uh, some practical exercises to help students apply the theories uh, with uh, some uh, scenarios uh, where they're required, uh, for instance, to make a decision about uh, an investment choice, for example. And uh, so they learn how to apply formulas uh, to more concrete, uh, concrete uh, settings. So I hope this uh, helps uh, to get a sense of uh, what, what we teach. So let me take uh, a few more, more questions. So hello, I'm uh, currently doing uh, an MSc in Public Financial Management. I'd like to do a PhD through distance learning or a flexible program which does not require residency. Will you have one at Safins in the near future? So the answer is uh, hopefully yes. I'm having at present discussions uh, with, uh, uh, within SOAS to launch the distance learning uh, PhD at Safins. Although I should say we are uh, examining uh, the requirements uh, for being uh, present uh, at SOAS for at least a minimum amount of time. 
uh, let me just uh, tell you that uh, the experience uh, of doing a PhD is a uh, large part an experience of learning uh, uh, research methods and uh, socializing uh, in a sense within the, the research academic environment. So because of this, there are good arguments that uh, a minimum amount of time to be spent, uh, at least in part-time mode, uh, within the premises of the university is important uh, to uh, kick off the process of study and to help the student uh, speed up and then later to continue in a more autonomous way. So I can't say at present uh, if uh, the distance learning PhD program will be rather a part-time PhD program, which requires at least a minimum amount of uh, time spent uh, in presence in the first year here at SOAS to attend the seminars, to deliver presentations, uh, to see face-by-face -face, uh, with uh, the supervisor. And then the rest uh, of the PhD program could be well conducted from the distance especially for data collection and then for the writing up stage. So we are still working on the details, but hopefully expected to see the PhD at CEFM to be launched in the near future. Another question from Gilles, is it possible to enroll to two courses that overlap at the same session and take the exam in October same year? The general answer is uh, we prefer no because uh, we take that most of our students uh, are busy because of uh, working. They typically work either as uh, employees or as professionals. And because of the amount of workload for taking one, one module, which has been calculated roughly uh, 20 hours per week, we believe that could be an overstretch to require students uh, or to allow students to take uh, two modules within the same, the same session. I should confess in very exceptional cases, uh, we have allowed a student to, to take uh, two modules. Uh, say for instance, uh, if there are good reasons uh, that this student uh, is not working uh, for a period of time. And so, you know, they may just uh, uh, change job from uh, one employer to another one, or they may not have any projects uh, to follow for a certain period of time. And, uh, in particular circumstances, we agree that it can be more advantageous to speed up the process faster and so to allow two modules to be taken in the same session. But please take this as something exceptional. Another, another question. Can you give a view on the types of roles graduates gone to have after the MSc? And would you say these degrees recognized abroad? So generally, yes, the degrees recognized abroad as a UK degree. Actually, the certificate, the degree certificates that the students receive is a, a MSc degree in the subject that you, you completed without any mention that it is a distance learning format. And uh, within the UK and within any other of the UK, uh, this is uh, um, recognized abroad, like any, uh, I would say, even any on campus uh, postgraduate uh, program. Another, another couple of questions, actually. Two questions. Can you take uh, one module per semester, and do I need to take compulsory modules before elective? So uh, the, first the first answer is that uh, first, uh, please note that uh, in, in CEFM, uh, distance learning uh, teaching, we do not really have uh, semesters. We have uh, study sessions, and we are, we, have, we are running five study sessions uh, during the course of the year, one after the other, basically, during the course of the year. And uh, the answer is uh, uh, yes, uh, the students can take just uh, one module per study session. So at present, uh, it is possible for students to take five uh, modules in the first year and uh, to take uh, the remaining three modules uh, in the second year or to take four and four in the first and second year. So the, this, this makes it possible to complete the MSc taking eight modules over the period of uh, two years time basically. And uh, the second question, do I need to take compulsory modules before electives? So generally, no, there is not any strict uh, sequence for students to take uh, uh, modules one after the other. case of a module in the MSc Finance and Financial Law, for instance. MSc Public Policy Management, it is not 
all, always the case, but sometimes uh, I may advise uh, students uh, to select uh, public policy and management perspective and issues as uh, the first model, because this provides the more general overview of public policy and public management uh, issues, if they do not have any particular interest of, or present, present preference. Then another question, do you have access to the campus? even if you are on the distance learning course. Well, of course, the distance learning courses of SOAS are just the SOAS students. So you are welcome to visit the campus anytime, anytime you like and consult the physical library that we have here. Sometimes, just to tell you, I received a request from a distance learning students, if possible, to come and audit an on-campus lecture, just if the chance to be here in London and to have a spare time to visit SOAS. And of course, I'm happy to, to arrange these. On campus uh, at SOAS this year, for instance, I teach modules on public radio and financial reporting. And uh, if any uh, PPM, PFM student uh, is uh, interested to come and audit uh, any lecture or class, they are welcome to come, uh, to come and see me. Just to drop an email and we can arrange for this. Another question from Joel. I'm interested in MSc finance and financial law because I'm from a legal background. Please, is it possible to provide access to either live or record the lectures in addition to the study package? Although I appreciate that this is a distance learning forum, but it would be helpful to have some form of lectures as well. Furthermore, in relation to the payment of the initial fees, my student loan is not to be paid until November 2017. Is there any help you can offer with regard to these? Well, with respect to the first question, I should say generally in the past the policy from uh, SEFIM was uh, not really to provide uh, uh, teaching materials uh, in a, a video format uh, or a recorded format, although we populated over time our programs with some uh, podcast that the students can listen to or download. The main reason for this in the past was uh, because basically the digital divide and relatively low, uh, slow connections uh, of uh, many students uh, abroad. I'd say probably this uh, scenario is changing quite fast uh, and uh, in the future expect uh, broadband connections to be available in most of the world. And so because of this expect in the future, we will uh, provide uh, more and more uh, multimedia materials uh, for, uh, for our students. Uh, this will take time, of, however, uh, unfortunately. So at present, I, I would say you may not expect in the near future to receive uh, uh, streaming of uh, lectures or recording of lectures in the, the finance and financial law in particular, but probably in any MSc program but hopefully this will change uh, in, uh, in the future. About the finance uh, question, uh, if you do not mind, I would prefer to put you in touch uh, with the finance department uh, about these, because these are more practicalities and uh, it would be more appropriate to negotiate uh, with the finance department any issue related to payment of fees. I'm more uh, um, capable to help you in any aspect uh, regarding Instead. So please feel free to send me an email about with this question, Joy. If you do not mind, I will forward it to the finance department. Another question on average: How many hours a week a student should spend per course module? As I mentioned briefly, briefly earlier, there, there was a, like a rough calculation that the distance learning students uh, spend uh, roughly 20 hours per week uh, studying in our modules. But please. The studying practice is very different from one person to another one. Someone prefers to spend a couple of hours I mean, every evening, for instance. Other, others may have time or may find it more productive just to focus one or two days during the weekend in a very intense way to catch up with all the readings and the materials. And, uh, never, and needless to say, some students can be faster in reading than, than others. So I would say roughly just to take a couple of hours per day in your, in, as, a, as an indication of your workload, but it, is, it does really depend on uh, personal, personal circumstances. 
uh, another question. I saw somewhere that each module takes 10 weeks to complete. Can you complete a module in less than 10 weeks if you want to? Well, at present, actually, the modules are eight to eight week long, plus actually the an extra week, which is uh, may which may be required for students to complete the second assignment, which is submitted after the end of the of the module. Uh, in principle, I would say students can study faster and uh, to read and to um, go through the materials uh, in a shorter time than the eight-week period. Nothing, nothing prevents students from, from doing this, of course. Uh, it could be also a of students knowing in advance that they may be more busy in the near future, and so they, pre they prefer to study to study. And, uh, Happy to do it, of course. The main requirements is that the students uh, submit the first assignment by the uh, after the first the fourth week of the uh, of the of the first of the of the module, and then the second assignment uh, by the week after the end uh, the end of the module. And then, in a sense, they are just invited if they like to follow the pace of the eight uh, units. But if they like, uh, nothing prevents them to to progress faster if they wish so. Uh, another question, so I have a background of uh, M.com in banking insurance management, so can, can I be eligible to MSC finance banking? Uh, so I'm not too familiar, I should confess with the uh, backgrounds, uh, qualifications and uh, financial institutions. Uh, so I would generally suggest that you can please uh, contact uh, the convener uh, of the MSC Finance Banking, uh, if you wanted to share uh, with him the features of, the, of your, your background. And uh, Jean-Luc, uh, in this way, you can uh, possibly receive uh, some assurance for, uh, before uh, uh, submitting your, your application. Generally, you would expect that you have uh, either an educational or a work background in the, in the industry of finance. You may be well positioned. To, uh, to be accepted for the MSc, but please uh, contact uh, my colleague, the convener of the MSc in banking uh, for a more precise answer. So another question, would you be able to advise what kind of roles uh, uh, graduates go on to after the MSc? Does the university have a strong networks with the certain companies in regards to this course? Um, the, the roles uh, graduates played, it really depends on uh, which kind of industry uh, they are from and which kind of MSc program uh, they take, I would say. So uh, I'm more familiar with the, the MSc in public policy and management, public financial management, uh, where most of the students, if not they already work, definitely they may, they may be quite likely to continue their career, like in central government, uh, a treasury or ministry of finance departments, or in consulting firms, or some of them, they also work in NGOs, Chamber of Commerce. Some of them, quite a number of them actually, they work in international organizations like the IMF or the World Bank. A few of them, they also work in sub-national governments. Applications that they already have some more experience which position them in a career in the public sector or in public financial management in particular. To a limited extent, I kept contact with a few of them. I can see that they are uh, they pursue their careers uh, further in, this, uh, in their particular industry where, where they are from. Then uh, other questions, other modules. Uh, Managerial accounting and international human resource management available on the MSc public policy and management. And note that the on-campus course has the option of choosing electives, but you have not found them on the distance learning route. Uh, well, um, most of the programs that we teach, we teach both in the distance learning and uh, on-campus format. They do not completely overlap. In the MSc Public Policy Management program in particular, at the present, the distance learning format provides much more electives, many more electives than the on-campus on -campus program. Uh, the main reason is that the on-campus program was launched just a couple of years ago. It is having an exponential incre increase of student applications, but we did not activate all the modules that we've, we have been offering to distance learning students yet. So you may find the modules in the distance learning 
uh, format of the MSc, which are not available yet for uh, on-campus on -campus students. So another question, is it possible to combine these programs with a full-time job? Uh, so in principle, these programs are designed for students who either work and so they may study in a part-time mode. Although I can tell you, I know of uh, many students uh, who do work full-time. Nevertheless, they find the time, extra time for, for studying. It is a pretty much a personal arrangement, I believe, of finding time from a family or a leisure time or arrangements within the work commitments to allow for the time for, for studying. But generally, yes, I have experience of students who work full time and nevertheless they're able to manage to do the MSc program in distance learning. Um, so I have again a question about the PhD in distance learning uh, program. Uh, unfortunately, I'm still discussing uh, with the colleagues the details uh, about it, so I can't be too precise uh, about the residency requirements, uh, if uh, this could be at least one semester or two uh, semesters. It may depend on the activities, the programs uh, which are required uh, the PhD students to, to take, but definitely the general will be the one that after a period of uh, presence and learning uh, on campus, the rest of the PhD program could be conducted in distance, uh, distance learning uh, mode. How near will you likely launch? <laughs> as soon as possible, I hope. But uh, um, this will have to go through committee's uh, approval, so I'm not in the position to anticipate when this uh, could, uh, could happen if uh, in uh, 2018, 19, or in the following year, basically. Do you have a compulsory online uh, seminars? Another question. The answer is no. In principle, uh, the feature of these uh, MSc programs is that the students uh, do not really need uh, to log in to any online platform anytime, if not just by, because of submitting their two assignments per module. So originally these programs have been designed in a way that uh, any student uh, who may not have uh, easy access to the internet or we have a number of students who travel a lot and so they may not uh, have uh, um, conveniency of access to, to the internet. So because of these, uh, these programs uh, were designed originally in terms of shipping a study pack and uh, providing uh, all the materials in a self-contained self mode for students uh, to study and just uh, to uh, log in for submitting their, their assignments. We still retain this, this feature, and so because of these, uh, uh, students are not required to do any, any online activity, like attending seminars. Of course, however, there are online resources, and so students uh, may nevertheless access uh, our online uh, study platform. They can find the forum there, they can interact with the tutors, they can consult uh, libraries uh, of uh, SOAS uh, and of the University of London International Programs, but there is no compulsory online activity. Another question, how many students are you hoping to take on this year on the PPM course? Well, let me say roughly, over the, over the about 2,000 students of CEFIMS, the PPM course could be probably the most popular one with roughly three, 400 students. And we have roughly an intake of about 100 students per year. In the last few years, these figures have been relatively stable. This gives an idea of how many uh, course mates you have. Uh, when you take any module, of course, if you go online, uh, you may realize uh, from the activity in the forum uh, that there are other students uh, studying the same module at the same time. And roughly, you may have uh, in between 5 to 30 uh, students, uh, roughly, taking the, exactly the same module at the same time. Is there an exam at the end of each module? Yeah, well, the answer is yes. Any taught module is assessed uh, by the, through the through the two assignments, each of them accounts 15% of the marks, and through the final examination, which counts for 70% of the marks. Another question, I have achieved an ICFE certificate from University of Cambridge, International Certificate in Financial English. Does it help for the MSc Financial and Economic Policy Studies? 
uh, the answer is unfortunately I would invite uh, Daniel to contact uh, the convener of the particular MSc program. I'm not an expert in any fields and uh, specifically in the uh, financial and economic policy studies. So uh, I, I feel that my colleague could be more precise in uh, providing an indication of uh, the usefulness of the certificate for taking your, your course. Would it be possible to take one course in a local recognized university in a sort of exchange program? Uh, unfortunately, the answer is no. At present, the regulations of these uh, programs, uh, which are regulations of SOAS and the University of London, do not basically allow transfers of credits across different institutions and programs. And so we do not uh, accept basically or recognize uh, program uh, credits, sorry, which uh, originate uh, from modules or courses which have been taken outside those uh, which are offered uh, at, at savings. Uh, so information for me. So I live in London. Is it permitted for me to attend the lecture alongside the campus students if I wish? I already told that the answer is generally yes. So it happened to me in the past to receive questions from a distance learning MSc, public policy management or public financial management students. If it was possible to audit, to attend uh, one of the lectures of the MSc public policy and management that we do on campus. And of course, we are welcome to do this. Just contact me, I will put in touch with a colleague if I do not teach the particular module, and uh, uh, we will be happy to, uh, to, to, to welcome you to, to the lecture that we do on campus. Are there any reasons why there are so few students aged 20, 24? Do you think it's because they are less likely to have extensive experience? Is experience in field essential to apply, or do you consider all factors uh, equally? Well, generally, it is a, a feature of distance learning uh, teaching. Uh, I'd say it's a worldwide feature to be uh, especially appealing for uh, people who already work. And because of their lack of time, they may not attend in presence uh, uh, postgraduate programs, if not possibly attending evening programs, for, uh, for example, which some universities do uh, around the world. So because of this, uh, uh, this is why we observe this uh, uh, relatively high number of students who already work, and typically this could be a feature of uh, people uh, in their late, late 20s at least, and 30s and, and, and 40s. So this could be one main, one main reason for the demographics that we, we observe as a feature of our, of our programs. We, we, we have also a few relatively young, uh, young students who may embark in the distance learning uh, mode of study. I should say many of them, to my memory, are individuals who may have already taken their undergraduate degree in the already familiar with the, the distance. Instead, probably someone who is relatively young and only had experience of studied in uh, on campus mode, they may have uh, some, uh, they may be a bit hesitant before embarking in a distance learning mode, mode of study. Another question. Uh, fin about the MSc finance and finance financial law. To which extent are the law courses focused on the UK legal system? What is the applicability internationally? Well, I'd say generally in, the, in our MSc uh, programs, uh, they retain a strong international focus uh, because we combine uh, definitely an expertise and uh, empirical evidence that we can draw from the UK institutional context. So, for instance, uh, code of practices for the for a good corporate governance in the UK. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we also have an expertise uh, in uh, the core regions of SOAS, which is uh, uh, Africa, Middle East and Asia. And so we also typically provide uh, examples uh, or uh, we provide the students uh, uh, the sense of, of uh, how is it uh, that certain institutions work uh, in these uh, area, other areas of the world. So uh, we are pretty much flexible in uh, providing the intellectual tools and the practical knowledge to, to know how things can be different across different countries, what could be international standards which nevertheless could be applied across countries, 
and also how it could be possible as professionals uh, to support the uh, transfer across countries. And so how is it possible for certain institutions, for instance, which originate from a particular country to be applied to another country context? So this is uh, the kind of uh, variety of uh, uh, tools uh, that, we, that we provide. Another question, can we do the dissertation while uh, completing uh, other courses? The general answer is uh, no, in the sense that the dissertation itself uh, is, uh, we, we realize that it's pretty much demanding, uh, first in the uh, sharpening uh, the research design, then uh, in the data collection, data analysis, and the writing up stage. All of these stages require specific academic skills, and it is precisely the purpose of the PhD to improve, to strengthen, and to sh sharpen these, uh, these, uh, these skills. In, in general, we prefer student, uh, students who take the dissertation module just to focus on the dissertation module. Having said that, uh, exceptionally in the past, uh, we may have allowed uh, at the same time to complete uh, module, taught module together with the taking a dissertation, for instance, if the module could be relatively close to, to the topic of interest of the dissertation. In students' circumstances, but generally we do not advise to take two modules at the same time. Okay, well, I can't see any other question here below, but please feel free to drop any other question if, uh, if you have any, any, any more. Is the support provided in helping students uh, choose modules? Well, the best support is the course convener. So for in each web page for each MSc program, you find the indication of uh, who is the academic, who is the course convener, and their email. And uh, really, please feel free to contact myself or my colleagues because we are happy to provide uh, an indication either by email or a Skype a chat. Uh, once we get a sense of the background, the interest, uh, the expect the career trajectory of the of the student, uh, we usually try and uh, advise uh, which uh, modules uh, could be more helpful for them or which one to take before before others. So just to contact the course. Uh, Convino, and we, we, are, we are happy to, to help. Okay, good. So here you can see another slide, which basically provides a summarized information, which I already, uh, already told you. So there are these uh, MSc programs. We are close to launch postgraduate diploma programs, which are shorter postgraduate programs, with, which are just four modules long. And uh, uh, we have almost completed the approval process, and uh, those will be launched in 2018 and 19. Uh, here you find some summary information about the dissertation, which uh, as anticipated, it's uh, an original piece of research from the student. I didn't tell you it is uh, 10,000 uh, word long, uh, typically. Uh, for um, in, Generally, in the MSc programs, uh, the dissertation uh, is taken after the research method module, because the research method module provides the students the tools for uh, properly designing a uh, research and actually the second assessment uh, paper, uh, the second assignment of the research method is itself uh, already the research proposal that the students uh, would like to, to draft uh, for undertaking the dissertation dissertation pro project. So the research, the, the research methods module and the dissertation module come in combination, if you like, like a bundle of two modules uh, because they together provide the basis, the foundations, and then actually the implementation of the dissertation module. In this slide, you also find the pricing of these modules, which are £1,260 per module. Let me also say that it is possible for prospective students who did not register to the MSc yet, also to take each of these modules individually first, up to three modules. So basically the idea is that before committing to taking the MSc program, which is eight module long, if a prospective student and applicant likes, they can just apply to take one or two or three 
particular models uh, before uh, eventually embarking uh, to take the MSc. If they pass these modules individually, for each of them they receive in a, a so-called individual professional award, like a certificate from the University of London. But still, if they wanted to progress and to take the MSc program instead, they can just carry forward the one, two or three uh, individual uh, modules which they took in the past. So if you like, this is a way to try and test uh, one or two modules uh, before taking the commitment uh, to take the MSc if the students prefer to take uh, to have a bit more of flexibility, especially the in the beginning. Okay. Another question: Is it flexible when I can start my my course? We have uh, rolling applications. We have uh, we have basically five entry points uh, during the course of the year, just a couple of months before any beginning uh, of the next study session. So roughly, the next study session starts at the beginning of November. And now at the beginning of uh, September, the 11th of September, precisely, is the next uh, coming deadline for receiving applications uh, to start uh, in the first uh, available study session, which is the one in no November. But we are pretty much flexible. So, I mean, the student can, for instance, uh, submit an application now by the 11th of September. If the application is accepted, the student can uh, uh, choose to select any module to start with in the next available study session in November or in the following one, which can be roughly in January. So uh, we are flexible to let the students register in, in advance any study session they prefer. If for any changed circumstances, family, work commitments, students change their mind, it is still possible to uh, to re-register, to shift the registration from one study session to, to another one. Okay. Uh, would you give an uh, email address for further inquiries? Uh, yes, of course. You can find my email on the website, but uh, I also try and type here my, my email and please feel free to follow up and send me any question that you have. Can you submit an application at any time? Uh, well, yes, the website uh, and the, the application form is always there and uh, open. Uh, if uh, uh, we receive applications by the 11th of September and these are positively processed, then the students uh, can start in the next immediately available session, which is the one in uh, November. If we receive applications after the 11th of September, we will process we will process it nevertheless very quickly and if the student is accepted then they can start but not in September in the next immediately available session which is the one in, in January. How long does it take roughly to hear back from you? Oh, usually the, the process of uh, appraising the applications and getting back to you is a rel relatively fast, could be roughly one week. And uh, uh, apart from the initial uh, positive uh, appraisal, there is uh, uh, also from your side uh, the requirement to submit uh, a copy of the, uh, your uh, study diplomas, uh, which is support uh, as a credentials, your uh, uh, past, uh, past uh, background of, of studies. So there is this, uh, uh, your submitting of application, the appraisal, the requirement uh, to submit uh, evidence of your past uh, studies. Uh, and after this is uh, uh, validated, then uh, you are uh, invited to make the selection of the modules uh, you wish to, to, to register. So the process, uh, I think, uh, takes can be between one or two weeks, roughly. Does a student with a special needs have a special examination arrangement at your uh, university? Uh, you, you needed to contact the administration, yes, to arrange for the special examination needs, uh, which may be fit for the particular uh, conditions of the, of the student. So my only advice uh, is to let the SEFIM administration know well in advance so that the local examination center can be well equipped to cope with the, with the request. Okay. So is submitting references also a requirement? Uh, references uh, is not really a requirement for the applications uh, to these distance learning uh, MSc programs. So we place attention to the uh, background of 
study of the student, to the work experience of the student, and to the personal statement. And the personal statement is especially helpful. Please take your time to write it because it is very helpful to understand the profile of the student and to sense how taking the MSc program can be helpful for the progress of their, of their career. Should I choose a research topic for dissertation from among the research interests of one of Safin's professors? Well, I would say not really. Uh, the research topic is uh, generally uh, coinciding with the interests of, uh, of the students. It should be relevant to the topic, to any of the topic which are taught in the modules of the MSc, of course. But I would say the expertise that we have for uh, uh, supervising uh, um, MSc um, dissertations, uh, it, it is even broader than the, the range of expertise that you find in among those of the of uh, SAFIMS uh, uh, academics. Uh, the answer, uh, the, the reason is uh, because uh, apart from uh, SAFIM academics, as I told you, we have also a wide range of uh, tutors, about 80 of them. Many of them are uh, professionals or other academics who are experts in other particular niche within uh, any, any discipline. And so as we notice uh, a particular topic of interest of, uh, of a student, we try and match it with uh, an academic or with a tutor, depending uh, on who has uh, the more specific expertise uh, to assist, uh, to assist the, the, the student. I should say sometimes uh, experience in the past, the students have very, very specific focus of interest uh, on, say, a specific topic uh, in an empirical interest in a particular country. And uh, sometimes it can be quite hard to find anyone at so -so who can really match the particular combination of interests. But nevertheless, uh, any of our supervisors is uh, well equipped to uh, orient the student uh, in uh, sharpening the research design, which is the most important part uh, to formulate uh, a proper research question, a proper method for data collection, and a proper method for, uh, for analysis of data. Uh, can I still get accepted onto a, onto a course before I get my final results? Well, the answer is yes. In the application, you may write your expected um, results from uh, a degree program that you are close to complete. Uh, we may provide a provisional acceptance uh, and just wait for receiving confirmation of the final results. Where could we find some samples of dissertation? Is it, is it recommended to go for a dissertation instead of regular, regular models? Uh, well, at present, uh, we do not really have uh, uh, samples of dissertations. Uh, although probably uh, if you have a look at the collection of uh, uh, research papers uh, that we publish uh, in SAFIMS, uh, there is a web page on SAFIMS about these, uh, you may get the sense uh, of uh, topics uh, that uh, could be uh, could provide a sense of what kind of research papers and dissertations uh, students may, may, may undertake. So these uh, can provide just uh, some ideas uh, of how research topics or research questions uh, could, uh, could look like. About whether to recommend to go for dissertation or regular modules, uh, I would prefer to, to, to have a look at the particular circumstances of the students, uh, really. The dissertation is a, a relatively challenging uh, piece of work. It takes a commitment of several months, uh, while students uh, are not expected to take modules instead. So uh, there could be some advantages out of the dissertations. Uh, making a dissertation, like for instance, uh, sharpening a research and writing skills, or making use of this, this dissertation for other purposes, like for instance, uh, start having a piece of research work for expanding it and taking a PhD at a later stage. But, but other students may just prefer to uh, progress faster, and uh, probably taking taught models uh, is a way to progress faster to the completion of the MSc rather than taking the dissertation. So I just invite you to contact your program convener to discuss what could be the best advice about this. OK, good. Uh, if you do not have uh, any other questions, uh, well, here you find uh, another slide which uh, summarizes uh, the, the process of, uh, uh, of application. 
So it is uh, submitted online. Here we state about 10 days to receive a conditional offer if any uh, component is missing, like we, we wait to receive the final grades, or we will wait to see the proof of your uh, past um, degree uh, certificates. And uh, here are all the all the all the requirements. So um, generally, we expect uh, students to be good students, to have a minimum first degree with the good grades. Although I can tell you there can be some flexibility in the extent to which that, for instance, a sound or robust work experience in, the, in a particular industry could uh, provide some signal that uh, the, the applicant may have nevertheless gained quite a, a strong understanding and knowledge in a particular topic uh, despite uh, the, the grades that they might have received a couple of decades before in their previous courses of uh, study. Uh, here you have a request for a clarification, possibility of starting or being accepted before the ending results. So just to clarify, it happens to me to receive some applications from uh, applicants who are just close to complete their course of study. Uh, for instance, they are waiting to receive confirmation of their final grades uh, or they if they have not received their uh, undergraduate uh, diploma yet, uh, but nevertheless, they may roughly reasonably anticipate the outcome actually from the transcript of the modules and the grades which are on this transcript already. And so, you know, they, uh, both the applicant and also the administrative staff at SAFIM can work out the reasonable expectation of the final grades of the, of the student. An offer, a conditional offer can be made on the basis of this uh, estimate expected, uh, expected outcome. And if this is roughly confirmed by the final uh, final grades, then uh, the offer is just uh, just confirmed. Uh, another answer to Alfina: Yes, uh, SAFM so as distance distance learning students are uh, so as so as students in all uh, in all respects. And uh, other other questions other questions. Could the dissertation become part of the PhD? The PhD will be by itself an original piece of work, the PhD thesis. So as a such, it should not be a way to recycle, in a sense, uh, past the work of the, of the students uh, in order to be part of the PhD thesis. Uh, otherwise, we incur into issues of plagiarism. But nevertheless, having said that, it can be often the case that uh, a student may start uh, working uh, on, on a subject from uh, in, in the dissertation. So, for instance, to do an extensive uh, literature review in, uh, in the dissertation, to tackle a particular issue, to collect data and so on. And uh, the PhD can be a natural extension of uh, some bit of work which had, had been done already. And so there is no need to start from scratch in doing a literature review. Of course, this can be just expanded, updated, if you get a sense of what I mean. Then about a question, proof of Eng English language uh, means uh, TOEFL, IB, IBT, IELTS. Uh, yes, uh, we accept uh, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these uh, certificates, any of these uh, certificates as a uh, proof of, of English language. Uh, then another question, so you already have an unconditional offer for the MSc Finance and Financial Law. Please, when will enrollment commence? But I believe it will start very, very soon if it has not started already. So the next study session, as I told you, roughly at the beginning of uh, November, and it takes uh, some time in advance uh, for safe in administration to know which modules uh, students take, especially because of the time of uh, preparing and shipping the study packs uh, so that they are received safely in time before the beginning of the study session. So I believe uh, the, uh, the request to students to select which modules uh, to take in the next sessions uh, will be out very, very soon. Okay, if you do not have any other question at present, let me, let me just complete the slides. Here is one with our on-campus programs, just to, to let you know that what we teach in distance learning mode is pretty much congruent to what we teach also in, uh, in uh, you know, on-campus students. 
uh, we will work in the future also in, on some form of a blended learning and possibility to uh, take either on campus or distance learning modules uh, and, uh, without any, any difference, but this is not uh, available yet at the present because of uh, some regulations to be perfected. But uh, you're welcome in any case, if you chance to be in London to contact me or any course convener, if you like to audit, uh, to attend any lecture or class to see what we do what we do on campus. Uh, just to, to tell you, we had uh, some uh, questions uh, about uh, career path and progress uh, and perspectives of, uh, of students. Uh, I would say SOAS generally and SEFINS uh, in particular has a long list of uh, notable uh, alumni. And uh, we keep uh, quite uh, um, constant relationships with uh, our network uh, of alumni. We have uh, uh, an extensive one in many many countries and uh, we try and meet uh, some of them uh, regularly with the uh, visits uh, which are done by SOAS academics uh, in person and events uh, in order to, to talk with them uh, to know about their career uh, progression and then so on. In uh, some events uh, we also typically invite uh, present uh, SOAS distance learning students uh, to attend these events and so this is also an opportunity to network uh, between uh, SOAS students and between uh, SOAS students uh, and SOAS uh, alumni. Uh, I had a couple of such nice events uh, before the summer um, in, uh, in, in the US, uh, in Washington and New York and uh, these are always nice uh, uh, ways uh, to help uh, students uh, to socialize and to meet uh, with, uh, with each other. Then uh, I had also some questions uh, about uh, career, career support and uh, in this respect, uh, apart from these occasions for networking, uh, I'm just uh, invited to contact you in the future, the SOAS uh, career support, uh, which is offered to both on campus and distance learning uh, students uh, as a way to, uh, to, to help uh, students uh, identify career uh, opportunities uh, for, uh, for their future. Okay, well, this is what I had in mind to tell you with the support of the slides. And uh, thank you very much uh, for, to everyone uh, for all the questions that, you, that you, you, did, uh, you did so far. Please, do you have any, any question? Any further question? Okay, so I believe that this uh, um, interaction webinar has been uh, tape recorded, so it will be made uh, available uh, online, hopefully, uh, also with uh, um, all, the, uh, all, the, all the answers which I provided along the way to the, to the questions. But if you have any additional question, again, please feel free to contact me for general questions or any specific program convener for, uh, for any help that we can provide from, uh, from, from our side. Uh, I look forward to, to welcome you, uh, you all uh, at the SOAS at some time. If you chance to be here, please uh, drop me an email. Uh, if you enroll and uh, successfully complete your course of study, an occasion to meet uh, could be the one of your graduation in London. And uh, um, so I look forward to, to, such, uh, to such events. Thank you everyone for attending, for your patience, for your, for your uh, attention. Best of luck to, to everyone.